training camp is days away. And Kyler Yamamoto is still not under contract. The Oilers, Ken Holland has had all summer to uh, work on a deal with Yamamoto and his agents. Time's ticking away. We have some comparables, at least in terms of age and position. You know, Drake Batherson in Ottawa and Joel Farabee in Philadelphia both recently signed contracts. And, you know, their, their contracts, the numbers, you know, are five to six million dollars per year per season there on multi-year deals. Mind you, those two players, they've their last season were good seasons for them. You know, Farabee scored 20 goals and Batherson is 17. Yamamoto hasn't approached those totals yet. He's a year older than those two. So what's the holdup with the orders and Yamamoto? Is it really? Is it? It's it's money, isn't it? Well, money is the is the number one thing. There's not a lot of cap room because Ken Holland spent a lot of that to you know to get Zach Hyman to get Nugent Hopkins re-signed, you know, to get a third line center and Derek Ryan to get Cody CC signed on defense when Adam Larson left. So he spent a fair bit of money. So it's not like he has, everybody seemed to think going into this, this season, off season, he always got tons of money to spend it all, but he doesn't. In Yamamoto's case, like most players who, after signing entry-level contracts, they don't have much leverage. He has no arbitration rights. He can't go to an arbitrator and say, I'm worth this. The Oilers have the leverage. He has none. And as you pointed out, Farabee and Batherson had better seasons than he did. Uh, their their NHL stats are pretty comparable by number of games they played in the NHL and, and how many goals and assists they've got. So that's a comparable for, for Yamamoto's agent, J.P. Barry, to use. But J.P. Barry, one of the best agents in the NHL, also realizes the landscape here in Edmonton uh, with not as much money to spend. And his player did not have a good season after, you know, you know, breaking through uh, on the right wing with Leon Dreisaitl and, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins, where he had 26 points over 27 games the season before, to say, ooh, that's, he's a guaranteed top six fo- forward. Well, after last season, I think the Oilers are looking at Yamamoto and saying, we're not totally sure what we got here with this player. Is he a top six right winger or is he a third line right winger? Well, you're not paying a third line right winger $5 million over five or six years as Philadelphia paid Farabee and Ottawa paid Batherson. So they want to see it one more time. I guess they want him to, to, to be the player he was two years ago, not last year's player, before they, they sign him to a long-term contract. And bridge contracts have been pretty much the staple for the Oilers over the last while whether it was Darnell Nurse, whether it was Ethan Bear, they tend to go that route uh, for jumping in uh, with a long-term contract. And the only problem with that is eventually the the bill comes due. You know, in terms of Darnell Nurse, maybe they could have got Darnell signed for a lot less than, you know, $9 million if they'd signed him before last season, but they didn't. So, um that's what they're doing with Yamamoto. And maybe it's time, maybe your players just have to bet on themselves, Craig. Sign a one-year contract. Don't sign a two-year contract. Sign a one-year contract for, you know, a little bit more money than maybe Jesse Pugliarvi is getting, which is about, you know, 1.2 and go from there. And if he has a really good year, don't lock yourself into a two-year contract. Just sign a one-year contract, bet on yourself that you have a really good year. And then next year, uh, you'll get a longer-term contract. You know, you brought it up. You said salary cap, and you know the owners don't have a lot of wiggle room when it comes to what they have left to spend. And you know, there's nobody uh, out there who's going to be offering an offer sheet to Yamamoto. You know, given his circumstances and his stats right now, a la Cup County Emmy with the Hurricanes and the Canadians. I don't know if uh, Yamamoto really has any choice but to take whatever the owners offer. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and it never it never works out well when a player is not at training camp. It's happened before where he doesn't, you know, players who were restricted free agents, you know, wanted more money and didn't show up at the beginning of training camp. And then they're behind. He'll get signed as Ethan Bear got signed last year when the season started in, in, in January. Training camps started, you know, 
I don't know whether it was second week or something of, of January, and the Oilers signed him while the World Junior Hockey Championships were going on here in Edmonton to a two-year contract because Ethan didn't want to be away from camp. So I'm sure it'll get done. Ken Holland's been away on a vacation, so that's one of the reasons perhaps that things haven't got done as quickly as perhaps people would like with with Yamamoto. And like we pointed out, they want to see if he's definitely a top six right winger on the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Jesse Pugliarvi proved last year, I think, that he is. Now, if he has another really good year this year, where his stats even get better over an 82-game season, then the Oilers are going to have to pay fairly big for him long-term, probably in the same Farabee batherson mode. And in Yamamoto's case, he has to – He's got, this is a perfect opportunity for him. If they still see him as the right winger with Leon Dreisaitl and Ryan Nugent Hopkins on a line, he's going to get his points, but he has to be able to score goals too with Leon Dreisaitl as your center. You, I don't think you can play on a line with Leon Dreisaitl and get one goal the last, you know, 25, 26 games as he did last year. 